Let's go back to JProco and start working on a report we know is going to be used frequently. This report will join the employee table to the location table. Type select all fields from employee as E. And let's look at that so far. And we want to know where the employees are located. So we will say inner join location as L on E dot location ID equals L dot location ID. And there we get the whole shoot and match. Too many fields. All we want is first name, last name, city, and state. So we'll say E dot first name, comma E dot last name, comma L dot city, and L dot state. Let's run that runs good just for good measure let's delimit this with square brackets and run it again well now we want to narrow it down to where l dot state is equal to washington okay all right there's the report we want now let's say it's going to be used frequently i'm going to indent this and put something above it that says create procedure and we will call this Git Washington Employees. And then put the word as there. Run it, open a brand new window, and type execute Git Washington Employees. Run that, and that name refers to all the code saved inside of it, and you get your report. Okay, let's close this window and look at the code that created this stored procedure and even close this window. We've got no windows open, but expand the JProCo database, expand programmability, expand stored procedures, and you can see we have the stored procedure called Get Washington Employees. So this persists. This has been saved to SQL Server, and anytime we want to run it, we can just execute this exact stored procedure. And the report comes up. What if I wanted to see what code was inside of this stored procedure? Well, you can write and say, script create to a new window. And it shows you the code that went into the creation of the stored procedure, where we've got first name, last name, city, state, where it all equals Washington. We want to build a second stored procedure that is very similar to this stored procedure, so I'm going to select the query inside of it, copy, and paste to a new window. Now we're going to change it just slightly so it looks for all non-Washington employees by saying not equal to Washington. And here's our three employees who don't work in Washington. Well, let's repeat the process and say create procedure get non-Washington employees as run that and now let's go ahead and execute this stored procedure execute get non Washington employees and there we go does it work if I open it in its own window yes it does Let's verify that we can find the get non-Washington employees in our stored procedure folder. Well, I don't see it yet, but as soon as I refresh, why, there it is. Now, let me delete it so I can recreate it in a slightly different way. Okay, this is now gone. Let's go back to the code that created it. And watch this. If you don't like spelling out the whole word procedure, you can just shorten all of your create statements to go create proc and the name of the stored procedure. Run that. Notice that this is back. And this runs just as it did before. Lab 8.1, skill check 1. Create a stored procedure in JProco called get overnight products 
that shows all the overnight stay records from the current products table. When you're done, your screen should resemble the figure you see here. Skill check two, which is very similar to skill check one, you're going to create two more stored procedures called get medium products and get long term products. The get medium products stored procedure should get all the products categorized by medium stay. The get long term product should get all the products categorized as long term stay. <laughs> That was Lab 8.1 on stored procedures. Next item, Lab 8.2, using variables.